Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. Well, we have a teaching moment. I'm going to teach on Hebrews 12, 14 to 17, and we're going to break it down. As many of you know, I am a grace preacher. We believe that we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. The ABCs of salvation is in the description box as well as the link to the video. Faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security. There are three other links, one on 1 John chapter 1 and two that really I took the challenge of a man who does not believe in eternal security and he had listed 18 scriptures like this one and um, he didn't list this one but someone else has questions because they've been challenged that with folks saying these passages prove you can lose your salvation once you're born again. That's not true, and I'm going to show you how. So I see this as a teaching moment, so let's get into it. Hebrews, and you know what? It's important to know this. I said this during my sermon this morning. If there are a lot of professors of Christ, but not possessors of Christ, and if you happen to fall into that category... Because there is a literal heaven and there is a literal hell. In fact, the New Testament talks more about hell than it does about heaven. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look at the ABCs in the description box and the link to the video, Faith Plus Nothing Equals Salvation and Eternal Security. If people say, I believe in Jesus, I believe that we're saved by grace, but you must be water baptized or you're not saved. That person has not placed their trust, solo fide, the, completely, and the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary, having always been God, came to earth, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, never sinned, shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary to pay the debt for our sin, once and for all, all sufficient, past, present, and future. Died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. If you don't believe that, if you believe you have to do other things, you have diminished the work of Christ, and you have not believed solely on the Son of God, you are not saved. I don't say that to be mean. I say it to be real. And I believe that the doctrine of demons is is this add-on, the back work, the back ending works. Now I do believe there are people who have genuinely been converted and born again, indwelt with Holy Spirit, and then they get caught up in false teaching and they start to get confused. Praise God if they the nanosecond they believe, nothing can pluck you from the hand of God. Once you're born again, you're not unborn. So we're really thankful for that. But there are many, many who sit in church pews and chairs who profess Christ and they're professors only, not possessors. I've said this many times. Sitting in a church pew or chair no more makes you a Christian than sitting in a garage makes you a car. So let's, let's tackle this passage if we will. And I pray that share it, subscribe, share it. Also check the subscription, check the bells. We, we've been saying that. Many have reported that they're unsubscribed. I, all I can do is recommend that you check. I know for Brother Barry uh, Scarborough and at one time, and I love Brother Barry. Brother Barry, if you see this, shout out to you. That man has been a blessing in my life. He's always encouraging. I love I love him, Sister Renee Rollins. I, there are so many that I love, but I, I go to their channels and view, and they encourage. We build, it builds us up, doesn't it? It builds us up. Anyway, I realized I hadn't seen any. Well, I went and looked. I was unsubs unsubscribed, so I resubscribed. Anyway, Hebrews 12, 14 to 17. Today I'm reading from the New International Version. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance inheritance rights as to as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. Even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what he had done. 
Now, we're going to go verse by verse. So Christians, when we start with verse 14, should strive for peaceable relations with all people and at all times. Absolutely, we should. But this exhortation is especially needful when persecution is prevalent, when, when some are defecting from the faith, and when nerves are frayed. At such times, it is all too easy to vent one's frustration and fears on those who are nearest and dearest. We should also strive, now this is what the word says, for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. And this is where many are saying, see, if you don't live holy and righteous after you're born again, you will not see the Lord. Well, I'm going to explain that because that's not what they're, that's not what this is teaching us. What is the holiness referred to here? To answer the question, we should remind ourselves that holiness is used of believers in at least three different ways in the New Testament. First of all, the believer becomes positionally holy at the time of his conversion. He is set apart to God from the world. Now, I'm going to give you scripture references, which I often do. 1 Corinthians 1, 2, and, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 11. By virtue of his, by what I mean by his, is him or her, in the spirit there is no gender, meaning there's neither male nor female, slave nor free, Greek nor Jew. By virtue of his union with Christ, he is sanctified for ever the nanosecond you believe on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary for the remission of all your sins, all sufficient, past, present, and future. You are saved and sealed until the day of redemption. You cannot be unborn again. This is what um, one theologian meant when he said, my holiness is in heaven. Christ is our holiness. That is, as far as our standing before God is concerned, in Christ. Our sin was imputed to him. His righteousness imputed to us. We are 100% justified and 100% positionally sanctified. The nanosecond you believed. Then there is a practical sanctification, or we call it progressive, 1 Thessalonians 4.3 and 5.23. Now I want to caution here. It's by abiding in Christ. You, Again, you're 100% justified and 100% positionally sanctified the nanosecond you believe sin can no longer be attributed to your account our sin was imputed to him his righteousness imputed to us that's second corinthians 5 21 this is what we should be day by day we should separate ourselves from every form of evil this holiness should be progressive that is we should be growing more and more like the Lord Jesus at all times. We're not saved by that because we're already saved. Do, do you understand? That's why positionally we are 100% sanctified. That's why we talk about progressive or experiential sanctification. And I caution you because then people try to get into works again. It's abiding in Christ. It's growing in Christ-like character. It's, be, it's Holy Spirit in us. And we do. We want to be in the word. We want to be in prayer. We want to, our reasonable services, we want to walk in obedience. And the sermon today addresses that on Romans 7 and 8. Finally, there is a complete or perfect sanctification. This takes place when a believer goes to heaven. Then he is forever free from sin. Hallelujah. No more carnal nature. No more sin nature. His old nature is removed and his state perfectly corresponds to his standing. I can't wait to get my glorified body. And you know what? I don't have to wait long because the bridegroom is coming. The rapture is imminent. It's any moment. Now, which holiness are we to pursue? And so Paul goes on to talk about holiness. But do you see when they're, when they're talking about the holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's any unconverted. We are the righteousness of God. We are sanctified 100%. Holy means we are set apart to God. How are, we do, how are we set apart to God? In Christ Jesus, the nanosecond you believed, you were indwelt by 
Holy Spirit. Okay, verse 15. The next two verses seem to present four distinct sins to avoid. But there is a strong suggestion in the context that this is another warning against the single sin of apostasy and that these four sins are related to it. Now, I have done a lot of teaching about this. Um, apostasy is a sin by unbelievers. If you are born again, you are not apostate. It's a wholesale rejection of him. And again, go back and look. I answer that in several previous chapters in Hebrews in the link. It's in the link to the description box. First of all, apostasy is a failure to obtain the grace of God. The person looks like a Christian, talks like a Christian, professes to be a Christian, but he has never been born again. He has come so near the Savior, but has never received him so near and yet so far. There are many who receive the truth, profess the truth, but never believe. I'm going to, brothers and sisters, I have been, I'm an evangelist at heart. And when I'm sharing the gospel of grace, and all I ask people, do you believe on the Lord Jesus? And they'll say, yes, I'm a Christian. I've gone to church my whole life. Then I'll ask them, do you believe in the eternally self-existing God and the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you believe that Jesus, God the Son, always existed, left glory, was wrapped in flesh, born of a virgin, virgin, lived a perfect life, never sinned, shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to pay the sin debt, died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. 75%, I'd say, of people are saying, well, I don't know about all that. Wait, you've grown up in church. You profess to be a Christian. You go to church. You participate in ministries. You give to the church. You do all these things, yet you don't know. Then you're not saved. I know that sounds harsh, but it's truth. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. We place our trust and rest in his amazing grace. Apostasy is a root of bitterness. The person turns sour against the Lord and repudiates the Christian faith. His defection is contagious. Others are defiled by his complaints, doubts, and denials. Verse 16, apostasy is closely linked with immorality. A professing Christian may fall into gross moral sin. Instead of acknowledging his guilt, he blames the Lord and falls away. Apostasy and sexual sin are connected in 2 Peter 2.10, 14, 18, and Jude 8, 16, and 18. Again, now pay attention, we're not talking about the true believer. We're not talking about the person that has been born again and dwelt with Holy Spirit and saved and sealed who has believed on the redemptive work of Christ at the cross of Calvary. In his death that he died, he was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. These are unconverted people who have put on the, the outward appearance of being a believer, goes to church, potentially professes the whole thing. This also doesn't mean that believers don't ever fall into gross sexual sin because we know that would be a lie. Look at the video on 1 John chapter 1. That addresses that. But you are still born again. Look at the prodigal son who was never not the son who went out. And when he went out, when we don't you know, the Bible, I like the acronym, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. The nanosecond you believed you were saved and sealed until the day of redemption. If you did nothing else, if you never went to church, and, and frankly, there's some churches you don't want to go to. If you never went to church, if you never read your Bible, if you never prayed, but you believed, then you are saved. That nanosecond you believed you were indwelt by Holy Spirit. But if you want to follow and obey and have the blessing that goes with that, I'm not talking about salvation. You already saved. Then you want to read his word, pray, and, and obey him, and honor him by the way we live our lives. I'm, 
I'm perfect in position to a holy God, but I'm not perfect in performance, and I'm not going to be, but one day soon, I'm going to get, hallelujah, I'm going to get my glorification, my glorified body, no sin nature. But I want to be really clear here. It's not, this apostasy is not talking about those who have truly been born again, that they then walk away from that. It's talking about those who put on an air or an appearance of maybe even thinking like many of the Pharisees, these people are not born again if they have never truly trusted and believed that his redemptive work is all sufficient. There is a woman who keeps raging against me, and I pray for her, and she says, he's wrong. You must repent of every sin. Repentance unto salvation, metanoia, is a change of mind. I've taught this many times. In the Old Testament, I think it's like 38 times that God repented. God didn't turn from sin. God is perfect, whole, pure. He's never sinned. In fact, Habakkuk 1.13 says his eyes are so pure, he cannot look on wrongdoing. He cannot tolerate evil. I, I teach this. Now, this woman is saying, unless... You do that before and after you confess every sin and you are water baptized. You will not see the kingdom of heaven. That's a lie. And if that woman believes that, you know what? She's making a self-professing, uh, I want to say prophecy over her own life, but it's not prophecy from God. But it's going to be, I'll say prediction. She's If that's what she believes and she's professing that, that is going to be her end. She will go to hell. And I pray for her that she is set free from those strongholds, those lies that she believes to be truth that work against the purpose and plan of God in her life. It, what's the will of God? Look at John 6, 28 and 29, to believe on the one that he sent. What did Jesus say to the thief on the cross. The one thief said, if you, if, if, if you are the son of God, get yourself down and take us with you. He wasn't believing on Jesus. The other one said, whoa, he's never done anything. He acknowledged that Jesus hadn't done wrong and that Jesus was the son of God. And Jesus said, you'll be with me in paradise today. There'll be people that say, well, they didn't have an opportunity. So no, it's a lie. It's a lie. Then the Lord would say, except for those on their death, deathbed who comes to conversion, except for, you don't think that he would address? No. What did, the jail, what did Paul and Silas say to the jailer who thought that they had all, that all the prisoners were set free? And Paul and Silas, they had, sang, they had prayed and sang hymns, and the shackles were released, and they comforted him by saying, no, not everyone, just us. And he said, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. Brothers and sisters, the nanosecond you believe, you are saved and sealed. So remember, apostasy is a sin of the unconverted. And in, and in this case, Paul's given stark warning as he does in other areas. You put on, you know what? I'm going to sound the alarm right now. To all those who watch this, that you're looking for things to trap us up in, I, I know I know the spirit behind it. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that these strongholds will be broken. Dear, dear Father, please... Please, Father, Holy Spirit, do that pre-conversion work in their life. Every one of them that watch right now, that those change, those high things, those strongholds would be broken. This doctrine of demons that they have bought into, diminishing your work, Jesus, on the cross at Calvary, that they will comprehend and understand, believe in and trust in and rest in your amazing grace and be, sa be saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in you, Jesus alone. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope you agreed with me, brothers and sisters, and that you agree with me. Okay, so finally, apostasy is a form of irreligion illustrated by Esau. He had no real appreciation for the birthright. He willingly bartered it for the moment, for the momentary gratification of his appetite. Verse 17, later Esau was remorseful at the loss of the older son's double portion, but it was too late. His father could not reverse the blessing. So it is with an apostate. He has no real regard for spiritual values. He willingly renounces Christ in order to escape reproach, suffering, or suffering or martyrdom, he cannot be renewed to repentance. There may be remorse, but no godly repentance 
which is the change of mind. The change of mind. The change of mind. I'm not going to trust in my own ways, but I'm going to place my trust completely in His amazing grace. Brothers and sisters, it's very clear what apostasy is, what it isn't, and also, we are holy. That means we're set apart. Because, 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us, For God made him who knew no sin to be sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! It's all about what Jesus did, his all-sufficient work on the cross at Calvary for the remission of all of our sins, all sufficient sacrifice, the remission of all our sins, past, present, and yes, indeed, future as well. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I hope, brothers and sisters, that that helps, and that helps those who are being challenged by this. And you know what? I would encourage you, come back and say, okay, now I've explained this passage to you. Now you negate. Show me where I'm in error on Ephesians. Use Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. Tell me how it's not. There are over 200 verses in the Bible that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Tell me how John 3.16, negate it for me. Negate it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Tell me how I'm wrong that if we believe on him, we'll have everlasting life. Show me how I'm wrong. Show me how I'm wrong with Romans 10, 9, and 10. If we confess the Lord Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For with the heart man believes and is justified, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Show me how I'm wrong with Romans 10, 13. All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Have an awesome rest of your day.